Sup, today we're reviewing Windsor Newton's Windsor Blue Green Shade. What's up, Leron here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of The Paint Show. Today we're going to look at Windsor Newton uh, Windsor Blue Green Shade. Uh, this uh, paint I just picked up a few days ago from the store. I basically needed a cool or at least a cooler blue because I ran out of them and um, I went to the art store and there was mainly St. Petersburg White Knights and this one. Um, now, on the St. Petersburg section, I didn't really find one that was uh, suitable for my needs, so I decided to try out the Windsor Newton one. Uh, this is uh, artist grade, it's their, uh, the main line, not the Cotman's. Uh, so hopefully it will be good and will suit my needs. I did need a cooler blue. So what we're gonna do now is look at some paint info. I'll already, I already poured it into a well on my palette. I'm gonna show you what it looks like and we'll just play around with it a bit, look at some mixes as usual. Okay, so let's get started. So this is one of the first um, tubes of Windsor Newton that I show you, so I thought it would be a cool idea to show it to you uh, up close. I did show you also this one, the uh, Windsor Green, okay, blue shade, so now I have the Windsor Blue Green shade, kind of the reverse of that. Uh, so it's a Series 1, Permanence A, those are some of the things we're going to look at in just a few moments. Uh, it's a rather small tube. It's five milliliters. Uh, I couldn't find a larger one. I don't even know if they, they do have some. Uh, it costs 28 shekels. If that's of interest to you, you can uh, divide it by 3.4 and you'll get the price in uh, US dollars. Uh, so in any case, really nice tube. Uh, let me show you what it looks like on my palette now. So here we have the paint on the palette, okay, you can uh, maybe see just barely uh, the color itself, but it is blue, probably you can tell uh, this much at least. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to try it out, so what we're gonna do now is uh, go over the information real quick, and then we're gonna try it out. Okay, so here's some of the paint's info. Uh, I do want to read to you from the Cheap Joe's uh, website about this particular paint. So, Windsor Blue uh, Green Shade is a deep, intense blue with a green undertone. It is made from the modern pigment thalocyanine, which was introduced in the 1930s, okay? Uh, so, let's look at some uh, more information. The pigment is PB15, as they mentioned, uh, thalocyanine blue. Uh, opacity it is, transparent. Light fastness is very good, A. That's what's written on the tube as well. Uh, it is staining as with most thalo colors it's inevitable uh, my palette is really stained from my first uh, thalo green that I thalo blue sorry that I used so far which was the Daniel Smith's one uh, and it is uh, non granulating I believe uh, but we will have to test it out okay uh, so this will be really interesting in terms of also comparing to uh, the Daniel Smith uh, thalo blue which I got used to um, and I'm curious to see how this one uh, stacks up against that uh, so anyway let's change things around and and just start looking at what this paint looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna start just by picking up some of the paint here and um, putting it on the palette. Um, it re-wet really fast, okay? I let this dry overnight. So I don't know if overnight is enough time. Uh, maybe it's too small of a time frame. Uh, so maybe that's why it re-wet so easily, but it did re-wet really easily. It does seem like the surface was hard, so uh, I don't know, in any case, Let's just get started here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. And I'm going to start applying this to my uh, little cute swatch here. Uh, and let's see what we get. Uh, the paper I'm using is my Canson Montval sketchbook. Okay, so I'm back to the sketchbook. I uh, just thought it would be nice to play around with it here as well. And I'm slowly adding a bit more uh, of blue to the mix. Okay, what I'm doing is basically adding a bit more to the mix that I have here. And you can see how uh, strong of a paint it is. Uh, I can immediately sense that. And in terms of what the color looks like, I really, really love it already. Uh, I'm gonna try and push it to be as dark as possible now, uh, near the right side area. Uh, when I touch it with the brush, it is a little soft. So I don't know if it really has to do with the fact that it only dried for one day on the palette, or whatever, because I do remember that Thalo Green took some, uh, uh, dried really hard. Uh, so in any case, this is the final result, a really beautiful green. 
Uh, the colors seem to be a little light on the camera monitor. Uh, I'll try to color correct it when I edit this video. Uh, so next up, let's experiment with some wet and wet. Now, because this is staining, I have a feeling I won't be able to get rid of the, uh, the bit of uh, blue that I have on the brush, but I'm gonna just try it out and see. So I'm just pre-wetting the surface. Uh, it seems like this, uh, it is transparent. So uh, I was probably able to get rid of most of the blue uh, in the brush. So I don't know, we'll see. Uh, so I'm just gonna start adding a bit of paint here and there, letting it kind of do whatever it wants to do. And I'm just grabbing some darker, more thick paint here um, and adding that to the mix. Kind of went outside my swatch here doesn't really matter and we're gonna leave that to dry for a while um, and come back later and see what we get it's really soft on the palette let me show you I think you can see okay you see how I changed its shape just by touching it so it is pretty soft um, I will say that Daniel Smith's phthalo blue was also very soft so it may be something to do with uh, the pigment or just the way it's usually treated I don't know uh, but we'll have to test it out uh, a little more so what I want to do now is just a bit of dry brush strokes um, and this paper doesn't have that strong of a texture so um, we will try and make the most out of it using the base of the brush uh, just to bring out some texture here. Uh, the part I'm really excited about is uh, seeing the different color mixes, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. Uh, because I actually want to try uh, using this color for uh, a, a different new combination I'm working on uh, that I accidentally stumbled upon. I didn't know that it works well uh, because I saw other artists use it, but I, I just got to it in a very natural way uh, on my own, so so I even feel better with that. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, first off, I'm curious to try this out with some kind of a yellow ochre, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. Now, I don't really have a yellow ochre on this palette, so I'm gonna uh, use my other palette for this. I have uh, Schmincke's yellow ochre here. Uh, so let's just try out this combination and see what we get. So I'm actually gonna grab some of the uh, Schmincke yellow ochre. I'll just dig really deep to clean out uh, some of the contamination and we get somewhat of a pure one. I'm gonna grab some of the phthalo, uh, phthalo blue here, Windsor blue, sorry, uh, same, same. And just try it out and see how they mix. So these create a very uh, nice muted green that I like, it's very natural. Uh, it will be great for landscapes, uh, I really like this one. Uh, let's try and have a bit more, I'm going to show you what I'm doing on the palette here. So, um, just grabbing here uh, a bit more from the of the yellow ochre. I'm going to let these two mix on the palette and we'll see what we can achieve uh, in terms of darkness as well. So you can see this is kind of what we get. <laughs> it's a bit different from if we would... Um, uh, combine French ultramarine or ultramarine with the yellow ochre, but still something that uh, seems to work to some degree. Uh, I'm gonna add just a bit more of the ochre here. So it does seem to work. Uh, next up I want to try it out with the quinacridone rose. I've got here the uh, Daniel Smith quinacridone rose and we'll try that combination. Just gonna get some of the blue here. We're gonna let everything mix on paper. and see the result. This should produce kind of a deep magenta purplish color that you can see here. I love this. This works really well in my opinion. Uh, I could use these as just uh, three primaries. Um, there was another one, so I'm curious to try it out with phthalo green, just to see uh, how it would work together. It should work together because they, they have a common kind of grandfather I guess or, or grandmother uh, but let's try it out so I'm gonna get also from my Schmincke palette um, the phthalo green here and we're just gonna let these two mix on paper see what we get I believe both are transparent and staining these are all combinations I love I think these two greens actually work well together um, I want to try out something a little different now. I want to try out a uh, warmer red, so maybe like the Pyrrole Scarlet that I have 
uh, here on the palette. Let me show you this one right here. Uh, we're gonna try it out and I'm gonna zoom out just a bit so that you can see more of the details. So I'm gonna just get some of the Pyrrol Scarlet here and that should they should mute each other. Uh, from my past experience, they should create a very metal-like uh, rust, uh, perhaps rusty texture. So I'm just gonna let them do whatever, whatever happens here. And you can see, first off, you can achieve a lot of uh, darkness with these two. Uh, so anyway, all of these mixes work really well for me and uh, it makes me reconsider some kind of an, a combination that I've been wanting to try for a while now. Um, so what I originally planned on doing is mixing French Ultramarine with Yellow Ochre with Quinacridone Rose or some kind of an Alizarin Red and Thalo uh, Green because it works really well with the Yellow Ochre. Uh, but now it makes me think that maybe I'll want to try out um, this combination but with uh, Thalo Blue. So uh, I'm gonna have to test these out together and see what we get. I used to really like French Ultramarine but then I just started discovering that um, the result isn't always to my taste. Uh, you really need to know how to use it. Uh, and I was struggling with achieving really vibrant greens and this was the solution, adding a bit of Thalo Green and then mixing that. And it seemed to work, but it may work even better with Thalo Blue. So in any case, I hope I'm making sense. Um, here's everything we got together. We've got the, the first swatch here, the wet and wet, and let me show it to you a bit more up close. You can see how the paint spread out. Uh, with the water and it is really strong so we didn't get too many gradual changes into the white uh, but in any case yep yeah, this is it uh, i really hope you enjoyed this one let's zoom out and wrap up this vid so this is it friends thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this episode uh, i really believe i'll have uh, quite a few uses for this blue and i'm gonna try it out test it out in multiple different combinations and, and things and I'll see how I can uh, fit it into my work. You know, the previous uh, Windsor Newton paint, the Thalo Green, uh, disappointed me in some senses because uh, it dried a little too hard on the palette for my taste and just a few other things, but uh, hopefully this will uh, give me a, a correcting kind of experience. Now, another thing is that uh, I really started uh, loving Thalo Green and, and relying on it more and more because I found this nice combination of like five colors that work really well with it and I will share it with you uh, soon. I actually plan on making a video on the topic. Um, so I, I may find out or rediscover uh, Thalo Green and find out that I actually like it. Okay, so I will keep you updated on that. Once again, I really want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out uh, the links in the bottom. There's my podcast, um, my Patreon page. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you still haven't and hit the bell to receive updates. Uh, I have a new series called Painting Masters and hopefully you've seen some of those videos. Um, so I definitely recommend you check it out. Uh, in this series, I just take one person that I really love their work, uh, an artist, and then I kind of showcase a few paintings and then focus on one and analyze it and why I think it, talk about why I think it works uh, and what I like about it personally. And we play around with it, we turn it black and white, we try to see many different things um, in regards to the painting. So in any case, I hope you check that out as well. And I will see you again in another vid real soon.